हेलो हेलो अर्चित 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 हाँ जी बोलिए आज आज का एपिसोड काफी ज्यादा धमाकेदार होने वाला है यू नो व्हाई आई नो व्हाई बट यू कैन टेल आवर लिसनर्स व्हाई सुनो ना ज्यादा अकलमंदी का मत करो <laughs> बता रहा हूं तो सुनना पड़ेगा अच्छा <laughs> सुनाओ सुनाओ हां गुड दिस इज व्हाट वी लाइक ऐसा कॉमेडी होना चाहिए सस्पेंस मत फील करो सो पीपल इन जनरल कम टू आवर पॉडकास्ट फॉर फूड राइट ऑफ कोर्स ये तो सबको पता है लेकिन आज तो मतलब आज फुल पैकेज है सो टुडे वी हैव ऑफ कोर्स फूड की बातें बट हेल्दी फूड की बातें और इट्स नॉट लाइक वी डोंट टॉक अबाउट हेल्दी फूड लेकिन आज तो हेल्दीयर फूड है देन वी हैव म्यूजिक राइट वी हैव समबडी हु इज अ प्लांट पेरेंट इट्स अ न्यू टर्म आई हैव लर्न इन द लॉकडाउन प्लांट पेरेंट एंड समबडी हु लव्स एब्सोल्युटली लव्स एंड अडोर्स वेयरिंग साड़ी तो फैशन टिप भी मिल जाएगी तो अगर आपको ये सब चीजों में इंटरेस्ट है दिलचस्पी है तो आप सही जगह आए हैं और तो दिल थाम के बैठ जाइए और लुंगी और जींस पैंट या फिर जो भी पहना रखा है आपने उसको टाइट करके बैठ जाओ बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू हैव एन अमेजिंग एपिसोड रेडी हो चुके आपने लुंगी टाइट कर लिया कर ली हाय नैनता वेलकम वेलकम टू आवर अमेजिंग बैंटर ऑफ पॉडकास्ट न्यूट्रिशन एंड देन author and then a lot of writing started happening could you please help at least me understand and everybody else as well because you have been jumping uh, and I, i was reading one of the articles as well where you mentioned that you know you sort of switched gears a lot and you were doing a lot of different things and thereby learning and grasping newer skills like you mentioned that i wasn't a journalist but i started writing uh, i wasn't into advertising but then i took interest in that as well so that's very interesting uh, please help me understand how did that happen so i think you missed the initial part where i studied medicine so that, that was the well. biggest so that was the biggest uh, gear switch because when you study a professional uh, course in india everyone expects you to like proceed in that line and uh, the standard comment is always like you can't waste a seat ye kar liya hai to you have to continue and how dare you study medicine and not practice medicine and that's the general thing i hear from everybody when i say that uh, i've studied medicine but i don't practice right now uh, it's also uh, you know i think i've been someone who went with the flow and uh, when i switched gears from medicine to currently uh, almost full time writing uh, i i didn't really feel like i have done something weird or strange it's just that i think we need to pursue what uh, gives us joy and uh, where uh, we find that we are getting better every day so uh, it's just that and uh, so the journey from um, medicine to uh, advertising uh, so medicine to actually healthcare insurance health insurance and then health insurance to advertising uh, in healthcare and then uh, that naturally led to uh, the writing part where i initially just started off uh, writing about food on my blog uh just because i was uh, you know experimenting a lot with food and i actually started cooking only in my late 20s and uh, tabhi to i didn't even know what i was cooking i would just throw whatever was available in the kitchen and uh, you know sometimes something would turn out so good but because i've just been putting little bit of this and that i would not even know ki kya i whatever i added in this if i have to repeat that dish i'll not know how do i make it again so that was the only reason i started my blog so that i keep you know uh, whatever experiments went well i would keep a record of that and that's how i started my uh, food blog in 2006 and uh, i i mean somehow i just uh, kept getting more interested in cooking it was not one of my big interests at all starting off i would just cook to survive uh, and it was not like something i would think of to do in my spare time that i want to try this dish i never had any such uh, love that kind of love for cooking or eating i was just it should be edible it should be reasonably healthy and uh, you know it should be fast to cook those were my only criteria but then i think it's also that the more and more i started blogging i felt like i like this and i like what i'm doing and 
you know when you feed your family and friends uh, interesting food the responses are always so encouraging and heartwarming that you feel very uh, validated to keep continuing in that and uh, that's when i moved uh, more towards nutrition i said now that i'm so interested in food and i've studied medicine i should maybe find a middle path between these two things and uh, uh, which is why nutrition seemed like the most logical thing to study uh, more in detail because uh, in uh, most medical courses in india nutrition is touched upon very briefly like there's not much going on uh, in detail so uh, i thought let me study that and uh, then on i started focusing even my writing on these lines so that's how i mean i don't want to make this uh, intro too long but in short that was how the journey kept moving from one uh, thing to the other wow and you know one thing which is really interesting and i wanted to ask you that as well a lot of people in the recent time have started blogging or vlogging when i'm saying recent time i think mostly like 2012 2013 onward the new age basically but there are and i there are people like you right who've been writing when perhaps for the lack of better word i would say when blogging wasn't quote and quote cool it was just like an extended dear diary uh, <laughs> right or like instead of writing in a private diary you were writing uh, on internet online uh, and also internet was also not a big thing perhaps uh, in 2005 6 um so and i'm just curious because often in the recent time uh, when we write and when say yaar you know hits nahi mil rahe ye nahi ho raha wo nahi ho raha flana dhamkana karke nahi ho raha hai job ki ab to blogging ka hi sort of speak zamana hai but when 2005 2006 it was a new thing how was how was the feeling then when you were writing and blogging uh, yeah like you said uh, i just started it as a dear diary but it's more like a recipe diary i didn't want to lose if i wrote it on pieces of paper or you know in a book and it would get misplaced and this was easily searchable because if i'm looking for something and i just search my own blog i'll be you know able to find it easily and that was the only reason um, i started a blog and you know blogger the platform if you had a gmail id it was just like a matter of 2 minutes you didn't have to spend like a single rupee <laughs> or any yeah. effort in trying to set up a blog it was so intuitive um uh, that uh, it was just so easy to get started and i think the more you uh, focused on that you realize there are other people like you because initially i i don't remember ever having searched uh, on blogs for recipes uh, before 2005 2006 i just thought i'm doing this and i didn't think of it as cool or something new it was just a practical thing to do uh, but then slowly when fellow bloggers started leaving comments and stuff and then you realize there's this whole other universe parallel universe out there which you didn't know and mostly the bloggers uh, in those days were expats who were uh, either us europe and all indians uh, who were trying to you know keep their family recipes in one place because those days like we didn't have whatsapp uh, calls and all so then you know you call your mom your grandmom for these recipes it's good to just put it down uh, in one place where you won't lose it and uh, that that exposure to other regional uh, cooking was so beautiful and a lot of like konkani dishes bengali cooking and so many things which uh, unless you had a friend from that community you would never be uh, exposed to that kind of regional home food uh, in restaurants you just get the standard indian restaurants just serve you the standard few dishes you will not find these kind of dishes so you got an opportunity to try out from each other which was also a big thing in those days we used to cook a lot from each other's blogs and not just leave comments and uh, you know encourage each other so that that community of those days was just amazing and unfortunately i think a lot of people uh, started well before the trend and they gave up when it became a trend maybe it's just an overdose of this thing happening everywhere uh, or not enough inspiration or you just you just finished writing 500 700 posts and you didn't really have too many other recipes to document or whatever it was the reason but um, uh, you know that that community was the most amazing thing for me in those days like did finding a whole bunch of like minded people on the internet from around the world wow wow no, that's the, that's the interesting part about when starting then and becoming still sort of speak a lot more relevant yes such a few things i want to yeah i want to pick your brain briefly on one particular aspect of your career that you mentioned which is healthcare advertising now uh, what are some of the tricks of the healthcare advertising industry that us 
outsiders don't know and, and should be aware of uh so this is typically the marketing that would uh, happen to doctors right the mm. medical representatives who go and meet the doctors they usually carry some pamphlets and some mm-hmm. informational material and mm-hmm. uh you know in those days it's also like some gifts or something relevant to go with mm. the brand that they wanted to talk about uh and not just always pens and diaries and pads yeah, uh, yeah. so um i think creating all this uh, content and material uh, first of all understanding what the brand is because these are all pharmaceutical uh, products and not uh, a regular fnb or something that anybody can try out and understand in the advertising world right but in when it comes to uh, pharmaceutical advertising like each drug has its own mechanism why is this drug better than some other drugs you know what kind of conditions does this work in uh, what are the fewer side effects in this like what are the positive aspects of this particular thing mechanism of action you know what they call like pharmacokinetics pharmacodynamics there are different aspects to any drug and uh, uh, for someone who is in general advertising it's difficult for them to understand all these scientific aspects of this product because it's full of pharmacology medicine uh so someone like me uh was like a go between the pharma industry and the advertising industry because i would understand uh, the scientific aspect of it the medical aspect of it and also kind of understand what do doctors actually want to hear uh, or what would make it interesting because if 10 medical representatives are going to see a doctor in the space of half an hour then why should he even pay attention to what material you are talking about how do you make things interesting so i my my role was like a bridge between um, the advertising folk and the pharma folk and uh, which is why i found it very interesting because i honestly didn't have any knowledge of advertising i've never i've studied science and then i've studied medicine i have absolutely zero uh, knowledge of marketing or advertising or anything of that sort so i just learned on the job and uh, i thought it was a very unique uh, profile and uh, i thought i would enjoy it a lot which i did lovely uh let's come to your book which i uh, recently read and i think it's a fantastic book called everyday superfoods i will link the amazon uh oh and if you're watching on youtube then anita has held it up in front of your screen so you know we often see in headlines in newspapers saying eat x to cure y diseases but these headlines don't often tell the complete story of uh curing a certain disease through a food it's a very you know uh, eye grabbing or clickbaity headline and i really like what you mentioned about this in your uh, in your book and i quote no single superfood has the magical powers to transform our lives and health all by itself the human body is a very complex machine and the solutions to a healthy and long life cannot be as simple as eating a particular food or swallowing a pill of extracts now what i also love is that you've mentioned a criteria uh to uh, for people to decide what they should eat so let's let's talk about that how should i who wants to eat healthy decide uh what i should eat depending on you know where i am uh yeah so i think this whole superfood buzzword is uh, very overused in the current times and uh, it all, it was already overused and the pandemic just sent it overboard uh, yeah. like uh, you know i think even short marketers and uh, uh, whatever you know mattress people are like itching to use the word superfood in even their products <laughs> uh, i i see i i was recently looking for uh, to buy a water purifier Uh, like the ro water purifier and i lost count of how many of them are saying that we were adding like you know these superfood minerals to your water and what not <laughs> so uh, i think it's just that uh, beyond uh, we need to look beyond the buzzword and the clickbait uh, side of superfoods which is what are these very everyday foods which are highly concentrated in vitamins minerals antioxidants or a combination of these three things and how best can we include it in our everyday diet without trying to deviate from what is our you know according to our culture and according to what our family eats every day we are not deviating too much from that but just gradually adding these 
foods which are easily available which are local which are versatile which are not uh, unreasonably expensive and you don't have to go to gourmet shops to buy them so this was my whole aim of uh, uh presenting with an initial list of course it's not possible to include everything in a book uh, so i've just started off with 39 super foods and uh, each one of them are uh, uh, available uh, and they fulfill these kind these criteria of course india being a huge country with th- like thousands of microclimates it's not possible that every uh, food that i've mentioned in my book is available to everybody like say uh, avocados are available in uh, karnataka because we get it from chikmagalur or kurg but expecting the same in delhi is not uh, essentially local to that city but uh, it's just that you can pick and choose from these uh, whatever is easily available for you and whatever fits in your diet well uh, if you are not someone who is the hipster kind to eat uh, avocado on toast etc then you have other things like lobia you have amla uh there is uh, all your local greens which the vendor gets in the cart and not necessarily even available in a supermarket so focus on these things i think just looking around you you will see so many uh foods that don't essentially come under the instagram glamour or uh, you know trending things or will not find itself on top buzzfeed lists but these are also your super foods and uh i think just adding uh, these gradually in your everyday meals is the best way to uh, good health lovely one one uh, quick question on that because I, i think i don't know if i was discussing this with archit or somebody about uh, quinoa and uh, because it's a new uh, well, not necessarily a new thing but an old thing um, picking up in in the market as well and everybody was like oh i want to try grains you know i'll be eating like healthy food and only grains they switch to quinoa uh i don't necessarily enjoy quinoa uh, but but i would love to hear from you what is your take on quinoa it's uh, definitely a healthy food no doubt it's got uh, for something which can be consumed as a grain it has a good amount of protein and uh, it's uh, you know for vegetarians and vegans it's a complete protein because there are very few plant foods which are uh, by itself complete protein but we get it a lot because in indian cuisine we always combine a dal with a, a grain uh, like a dal and yeah. rice or you always eat in combinations we never eat just one thing or if not in one dish in a day you've definitely eaten different groups so you and even if you're a vegetarian you do end up getting complete protein but quinoa by itself has uh, it's a complete protein it's rich in fiber wow. and a lot of nutrients so it's definitely a good food uh, and no doubt and the the hype and the popularity across the world uh, is rightly deserved uh, but it's also that uh, in few years ago it was sold for nearly like uh, Thousand rupees a kilo or something. I don't know, but it was very expensive, yeah. uh, or even like three thousand a kilo. I'm not sure. Uh, but currently, it's even sold at like two hundred a kilo, or like it's uh, it's come down to almost like a good basmati rice, if you will. Yeah. And um, it's also grown like even in Karnataka, it's grown. It requires very less water. It's not a traditional grain. so it's almost hmm. like a millet which requires very less water uh, as compared to rice which is a very water intensive uh, crop so yeah. these things do make it uh, eco friendly it's also good for health um, but then again as long as it's not being imported from uh, central america across 10000s of miles and uh, you know that whole eco friendly thing is out of the uh, yeah. picture then yeah. uh, as yeah. long as your your uh, sure that it's grown locally uh, do consume it uh, again but then make sure you're consuming a variety of everything because i think uh, when it comes to uh, getting a variety of nutrients biodiversity is very important you can't because every plant and we don't need to know the absolute details of this or uh, do research into every ingredient but it's a well known fact that every leaf every leafy vegetable every vegetable every fruit every grain uh, everything has different uh, profile of micronutrients and when you eat a variety of it in your daily diet you end up getting everything you don't have to understand what has how much etc and not get into that kind of detail but just making sure you're eating a variety of foods and not just sticking to one thing and being so picky that you don't uh, eat variety and you're just going to the supermarket where they stock only like the top 10 vegetables 
given how diverse the fruit and vegetable uh, availability is in india you should yeah. make use of all of that and uh, so quinoa can well be a part of that kind of a diverse diet lovely so, and we are huge fans of uh, millets on this show we have a hashtag make millets great again uh, i am a huge fan of ragi bajra jowar of course depending on the season how, how would you sort of compare these uh, millets which have been there in india for a long period of time versus say quinoa oh definitely uh, apart from the fact that uh, quinoa is a complete protein and mm. uh, millets need to be combined with uh, a lentil or something to mm-hmm. be uh, qualified as a complete protein they both are pretty much uh, uh, comparable like uh, even uh, millets are high in fiber high in calcium uh, and uh, they are overall excellent uh, food Uh, then again a variety of millet so each one gives slightly different kind of micronutrients and also very versatile you can use them not just in indian dishes you can create different kinds of uh, like literally uh, every breakfast uh, dish in india be it uh, you know upma or uh, sabudana khichdi or poha you can make everything like with a different millet right and yeah. uh, i personally love sabudana khichdi but that uh, but the sago is like a very poor uh, in terms of nutrition it's mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty much just starch and nothing else <laughs> so when you use a millet you can get all that flavor and you know with the peanuts and the potatoes and the chilies but uh, you have like a definitely a much more nutritional breakfast uh, and if you love indian breakfast you don't have to like give them up but you can still enjoy them in a much more uh, healthier format of course once in a while sabudara is also totally fine but you know if you want to eat it on a more regular basis and maybe sometimes you can substitute that with this lovely i i just i also like the way you said that you can uh, sort of club a lot of indian millets with the western food as well and that made me sort of remember uh, mm-hmm. one of the cafes i used to work with and it was a european cafe based out of uh, in delhi only and uh, so there i had uh, instead of the usual rice i used to make the soto out of uh, millets out of jawar and uh, second one was uh, with fish so the normal uh, lemon grilled fish basically uh, that usually people give with some sort of grain which is again couscous but again i substituted that with jawar again uh, well of course uh, cuz i think also the texture of jawar goes really good with uh, fish so i just i think absolutely like people who who want to explore especially the uh, people who are in west or people who like western food can also switch to millets and uh, as archit mentioned make millets great again <laughs> that that also remind me uh, nainta uh, another because you mentioned about quinoa 1000 rupees kg uh, quinoa 2000 rupees kg quinoa i want to come to another expensive um, spice if i will um, which is called saffron and uh, connecting that with uh, because your instagram twitter all sorts of handle uh, is saffron trails uh, why is that <laughs> also because i'm like good question you're not from so to speak kashmir belt uh, so why saffron <laughs> you know like i was telling you uh, when we started when i started my blog i didn't even think twice ki you know should i start kya karna hai what should i name it as i had no such uh, things it was so uh, uh, it was so random and just like i felt like starting a blog i started a blog i didn't even think about it and i i i didn't look at it in terms of any future what's the potential of this or what am i going to do or how long am i going to write i didn't think of absolutely anything and um, you know why saffron trail and the day i started my blog i was making kheer <laughs> and uh, usme i had added kafi sara saffron and uh, that you know that aroma if uh, of course you cook a lot and you are a chef uh, you know certain aromas they just flow in the air and it just comes to you like even if i didn't know i was cooking something or it was coming from a neighbor's house there's this wave of this aroma that just uh, comes and you know tells you that hey this is being cooked or right. even like uh, when you have this tropical uh, fruit like a guava or a mango in your kitchen and it's getting ripe or a jackfruit you know that aroma just comes to you and it tells you that hey i am ripe you know so 
uh, you don't have to even pay attention to it so similarly when i was cooking this kheer and this this aroma of saffron was just coming to me in waves and when i was just like sitting on that title field and thinking what should i type like what the hell am i going to name my blog i didn't want to call it nandita's blog or something and make it so self indulgent i said i'm going <laughs> to think of something creative and nice and huh. uh, it was just a, it was a trail of saffron aroma that hit me and i just called it saffron trail there was absolutely no reason no seo no nothing behind the naming of my blog yeah could wow. i have named it something more sensible with food in it and all which would currently give me some better seo yes maybe but i thought let i've done this for so long and i just thought it's and you know even when we started our social media profiles be it facebook or uh, instagram it was only to promote what we are posting on our blog and stuff so it made sense to have uh, the same name everywhere and even now a lot of uh, you know digital marketing people say that you should have the same handle across every platform so people don't have to search for you and uh, if it could be your blog name or your name but try not to keep it something very funny like bad tofu <laughs> 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 so because that you know i actually uh, when i was typing out arshit sandal to reply to him or something i, I thought it's some banto or something and then when i typed the whole thing i realized this is ban tofu so uh, you know but yeah it's funny it's quirky of course it's also memorable uh, but when it comes to like uh, digital media it's just nice to keep the same handle across uh, all the platforms so yeah. i just thought okay let me continue with this and uh, you know whatever visibility and for whatever it's worth <laughs> so that's the story <laughs> behind my handle finally i've cracked the reason for my low number of followers on instagram now, and twitter <laughs> now you know we oh, uh, on on the other hand uh, archit and i i'm assuming almost let our head for a month to decide what should be the name of our podcast <laughs> it it unlike you you said it just like came to you naturally right uh with us and i did not came to us naturally in 2020 just... if i started my blog in 2020 i'm sure even i would have done a ton of research and understood what's good for search what's good for seo and those yeah. were innocent times you just went with your instinct but that's the funny thing that. you but you would think that we did put so much of effort in finding what seo will work <laughs> we did not we didn't <laughs> we were just like oh listen this is better no no that is not better so i don't think we did seo at all we were just looking at it saying nah this is not funny this is not cool this is yeah, very yeah. serious ha oh must baat nahi ban rahi see you talk <laughs> about <laughs> food <laughs> and you uh, have top variable you talk about food and you have curry on your podcast so that's kind of a good connect so it's yeah. still good for to be in the range of something around food that's something yeah. when we look back now we're like oh yeah <laughs> it makes sense when it we naming sense. it it was just like isme maza aa raha hai that's yeah. it Spe- <laughs> so speaking no of speaking of instincts uh you've stopped you've talked about mindfulness eating in your book everyday superfoods uh which is about investing all your senses into eating and cooking food personally uh mindful eating has been a game changer for me i used to be an overeater as a, a teenager and i used to be quite unhealthy but as i started to say meditate do pranayama and have such practices in my life every day i started to listen to my body more it tells me when i've eaten enough it tells me when i need to stop uh, it tells me if certain foods are uh, good for me or not like it rejects foods which are not uh, good for me and for example i quit maida or refined grains uh, because i used to feel bloated or lethargic after that for me this works better than a metricized method like calorie counting like every day just noting down how much have you eaten instead i list listen to my body saying hey i've eaten enough or hey i've not eaten uh, say enough protein today so i don't feel good what is your advice on uh, for people who want to start mindfully eating yeah so very good question and it's truly something that troubles us all in the current times yeah uh, see calorie counting uh, i would say it's good as an indicator uh, an initial indicator because sometimes we are so clueless and we have been eating so mindlessly all these years that uh, 
uh, I don't know how much I have been eating or am I, uh, if my calorie uh, requirement for the day is say 1500, have I been eating 3000 calories a day? You need to have a rough uh, estimate of what are you eating in a day. Uh, and sometimes it's really difficult to say because, uh, you know, you might just think you're eating home cooked food and everything is healthy. But when you take second servings, and especially these days when we are all at home and we can, it's not like we are eating some set lunch, we are eating at home and we can take as many servings as we want or as is cooked in the house. Um, we don't pay attention to the fact that maybe we are overeating because uh, we are still not in tune with our body's uh, signals or we eat in a distracted uh, frame of mind where uh, the stomach is not sending the right signals to the brain and you are not registering your brain signals. Uh, so in these, in, in, these uh, in this circumstance, it is good to have uh, some, you know, initial days use some app to understand what are you eating. That's like a food diary or you can even write it down in your own uh, diary and check out what is the rough estimate of calories. You don't have to like weigh every gram and uh, do all that. But uh, doing this for a longer period of time or for life is neither sustainable nor is it doable. It takes off uh, the joy of eating and uh, it also makes eating stressful. Uh, it, uh, you develop a very unhealthy relationship with food in the long run. Because then if everything is a number and you have to count that number, then eating is like a punishment. And uh, definitely the method that you talked about and how you've gone into mindful eating, uh, it, is, it is not very easy to suddenly jump onto that, but it's a slow process. But when we get onto that, it's very rewarding. Uh, when uh, you, know, you don't need an app, you don't need a notebook, you don't need a Google to check what is this calorie, but your body just uh, tells you. And we forget our body is like a very, has a very, very complex hunger and uh, uh, thirst mechanism uh, in terms of uh, balancing it out, etc. So, you know, I was listening to this podcast on uh, uh, should we actually drink eight glasses of water in a day? And, uh, you know, it's a very scientific podcast. And they said it's complete nonsense. There is nobody who has said that it's eight glasses because it depends on your thirst. Where have you gone? What are you doing? Where are you living? And uh, nobody is ever going to die of dehydration because the thirst mechanism in your body is so powerful that you, if you are anywhere one kilometer within the range of water and you're thirsty, you'll run for that one kilometer and you'll grab that glass of water. Uh, you're never going to be surrounded by water in your kitchen and go thirsty because you didn't drink uh, water. So I think that whole intuition. So when we go by these set numbers, I have to force myself to drink one glass of water in every hour, or I have to force myself to eat these many calories a day, or I have to restrict myself. Uh, all that becomes, uh, you can do it for three months, six months, but beyond that, it's really difficult and it's uh, not sustainable. It's not healthy. And we need to develop this good relationship with food where we eat things that nourish us which also give us comfort occasionally, which makes us happy and each in its own place and not overdo. I mean, the nourishing part should be our regular part, but the rest of the things can come and go. But even those cannot become the mainstay. Uh, then again, the balance uh, goes off and we end up overeating and eating non-nutritive uh, foods. So it's a very complex thing, but it's also not so complex because our ancestors would do that effortlessly and uh, you know, animals do that effortlessly. Uh, so it's not something that uh, I think we just need to be a little more in tune with our own uh, body signals and, uh, and that will actually serve us for life. On, on, on that really nice signal and uh, talking about uh, water, I think we should uh, now take a water break and uh, come back because we have we'll have Amit coming in and he'll talk hello everybody he will talk about that and then <laughs> we'll come after a tiny break hello welcome back uh, uh, welcome back is clear because Pani Vani has been peeled now uh, people who keep on uh, listening to us um, will know the fight the great fight the potato fight uh, <laughs> which Archit and I have now Nanta you started uh, writing in the first mint article first article on mint uh, was on uh, potato uh, and I think potato is often misjudged um, I, I mean people say be like potato 
and I, I think people should be like potato because hey you use potato from electricity to vodka <laughs> and in biryani to uh, vada pav of course um but but so i am a fan of potato achit isn't really fan of potato um and but i would like to hear from you um should we love potato or not what are the benefits of eating uh, potato or uh, not eating potato i think every sensible person should like potatoes what yes. not to like <laughs> yes what's not to like in a potato potato I wins again achit just saying <laughs> i i, I have, before uh, before you answer i have a very brief story so uh, i was in college and we had this tiffin service i was in mumbai and i i was living in andheri and every day in the tiffin there were th- three two vegetables one was say mutter uh, and the other would be say lobia and both of them always had potatoes like potatoes were there in both the dishes and i think over six months of eating potato so much potato just made me like sick of potatoes and i and i often think that eating say roti with alu ki sabzi uh, potato sabzi is that's just a lot of you know starch lot of carbs and i i am not a fan of eating just carbs of course i would like to balance my meal with proteins as well so uh, that's why i've been sort of traumatized with too much potato that's my reason of not liking potato all fair points and i agree yeah. with you too much of anything can uh... you know make you feel fed up of that even if it's potato so i agree yeah. but uh, i think uh, the one the beauty of a potato is that uh, it just stretches a meal and mm-hmm. uh, in places where like you know uh, i was talking to uh, uh, when i just when i was writing that my first mint lounge column i was talking to my neighbor when we were at this place where we buy vegetables every week it comes to our complex and we end up exchanging oh you're buying this what are you going to make with that and we have this little chat and mm-hmm. um, you know she is uh, married to an assamese and uh, she was telling me that uh, even if it's like a chicken curry or anything they always add potato in that it's just that also i think in olden times what was that uh, the chickens were what were you know grown around the house and they were running mm-hmm. around the house and like one of them was used to make a curry and if that one chicken was not enough for six seven people adding some potatoes always gave it that kind of stretch to feed more people than what only using that chicken uh, would have used so even when you make like a vegetable like a bindi or a gobi these vegetables they just contract so much like you can make cut half a kilo of bindi but mm-hmm. once you are done cooking it it will be just like one cup full yeah. so adding uh, potato just gives it that heft and potatoes don't shrink they expand so it feels like you know you can feed more people and uh, it's uh, always giving this textural contrast to any dish like you know if you have like a slightly crispy bindi then the softer potato uh, feels good when you're eating it so uh, in my house like uh, traditional tamil house potatoes were not used so much at all in fact uh, my grandmother would just make it on sundays and and every vegetable uh, like how it's in north indian cooking we don't add potato to go with everything it's quite uh, it's not at all the tradition like if it's cabbage it will only be cabbage sabji if it is uh, bindi it will only be bindi so each one is cooked separately and uh potato is of course made in a few different ways and it's made separately and it's always uh, in my home it was always considered a treat and not something that you eat every day because it was considered a starch and not a vegetable uh, yeah. like because uh, we used to eat rice and uh, at home every day for lunch then eating again rice with potatoes was not thought of as a smart thing to do that also made yeah. me extra love potatoes because it was not so easy to come by <laughs> so it's also that scarcity made me uh, love it more but certain dishes like you know for like i'm sure like for non vegetarians you'll have other options in samosa etc but for a vegetarian you can't think of eating a samosa without a nice uh, alu samosa or like the punjabi samosa so it's just something that uh, is uh, is just so delicious you stuff to refuse the scarcity made you love potato and abundance made a chit <laughs> not yeah. love potato yeah and and, and uh, in defense of potato and this is the first time you'll uh, hear me say that it has, pot- potassium. <laughs> it has a lot of potassium which is uh, a salt which our body needs a lot 
Yep. And um, vitamin C, actually, uh, it's rich in vitamin C, which people don't realize. And it's actually a very healthy uh, spud, uh, carb, vegetable, whatever you like to call it, mm. as long as it's in how it's made. So, of course, mm. when you're eating it as highly processed chips or highly processed uh, French fries, it's uh, you're lo- lost out on all the benefits uh, because you're not going to say I'm eating French fries because I'm getting... Uh, Uh, you know, uh, vitamin C out of it. Uh, So uh, when you just like make a sabzi or you're um, having it like a boiled potato as a chart or something, it's definitely uh, very filling, uh, very healthy, rich in fiber. It's really, uh, it is good for you and to be included every day. It's a good food. I also think it must be some uh, North Indian guy who went to South and added aloo in the masa, in the dosa and said, hey, I'm missing, <laughs> I'm possible. missing potato. <laughs> I should have potato, so they just added it. And uh, yeah, South I, Indian. I wonder how that started. I, uh, I, I don't remember having read about how aloo started getting into masala dosa. Yeah, it's a, it's a good topic to, uh, we, we will revolutionize we will Potato. Maybe to make it more filling because one dosa is a bit too light for anybody. So when you add yeah. potatoes to that, even one masala dosa is kind of enough for one person, right? So it, I, maybe that could be the reason. I have a very uh, North Indian thing to say. Uh, my favorite filling for dosa is uh, paneer. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know that a lot of people faint listening to this. but I don't yeah. mind actually. I, I have nothing against such uh, combinations which yeah. to each their own, right? And Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. once I had posted this uh, picture of uh, Rajma with dosa and I got hammered by both the North Indians and the South Indians. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you pissed off both of them together. I pissed both, uh, both of them mm. in one picture. <laughs> and like you, I said, I want to have some protein with my dosa. So I'm exactly. eating rajma, what's wrong? Yep. And I like it. So like people think this is bad. I said, unfortunately, this is not made for you. This is made for myself and I like it. <laughs> That's a really good reply. <laughs> yeah. Speaking yeah. of uh, your uh, social media, I was on Twitter yesterday on, on your Twitter profile and I saw you posting about fermented foods. Yeah. Now, it's called Sony, uh, Alchit. Research, stock, you know, whatever, uh, whatever people want to say. Uh, we have to maybe run this professional podcast. We have to do research before every episode. So we research on social media profiles of our guest. <laughs> so in my research, uh, I saw you posting about fermented food. And I'm also a huge fan of fermented food. So, so is Sada. And for good reason. Uh, we've always had dahi in Indian diets. Uh, there's also things like fermented carrot juice or kanji as it it's known yeah. here. Uh, but now people are trying to experiment with more fermented foods like apple cider vinegar, kombucha, tepache. Why are fermented foods important? Like, why should we include them in our diet? Uh, the most important reason is that uh, they are a good source of uh, probiotics and uh, in, in current research has proven that the gut is literally everything. It's the gut bacteria that are actually running your whole body. When you're eating food, you're feeding the bacteria, you're not feeding yourself. So, uh, and also gut controls your mind. Uh, your not, and it's not just the digestive system as we would think much earlier, right? Yeah. So uh, this is why the importance of fermented foods has uh, gone up so much in the recent times because of uh, more understanding, more research, and uh, understanding the importance of uh, the role that the gut bacteria play in our well-being. Uh, and it is the easiest way to control what's in our body is through what we eat. And uh, when you eat fermented foods and you're eating not just uh, probiotics, but also prebiotic food, which feed the food to the gut bacteria to make them uh, propagate and you know uh, colonize our gut with the good bacteria, uh, you're doing yourself a very good thing for your wellness uh, and so many other health benefits that happen via these gut bacteria. So I think uh, that's the first reason. And the second reason, of course, that fermented food equal to flavor. And uh, it's, the, it's the bacteria do magical things for flavor that we as cooks, we cannot do that in our kitchen. At a molecular and a microbial level, they are doing so much. And uh, these chemical changes that happen, they just give such unusual flavors to food and why not exploit that and why not uh, you know I'm just making this uh, 
a fermented soda at home and it's just not even 24 hours and i had a taste of it and like the good way to do fermentation is to keep tasting so you know where to stop and how sour you want it to go so i tasted it and this this is so good why would i buy a bottled drink with ton of sugar and ton of chemicals where this is actually homemade 100% natural very low in sugar and whatever sugar i add is already used up by the bacteria so why would i not have that instead and it's actually free because i'm using it with whatever waste fruit peels and stuff that i'm going to throw away so uh, you know i i see no reason why everybody shouldn't be doing this and enjoying uh, and it's it has like a very low alcohol percentage uh, this fermentation and it's not really uh, and like some people think that it is it turns into alcohol that's not true uh, it's got very mild uh, like that too depends on how long you ferment it for and in what conditions etc so i think everyone should give it a try and there are different beverages and different foods to suit every you know liking every culture like to add to your daily diet uh, you can create those kind of dishes fermented dishes and uh, uh you know enjoy them for flavor as well as health have you ever uh, had fermented um, coconut water yeah i think i have had it once in uh, kerala that is toddy toddy and uh, yeah but you know interestingly and funnily uh, while coming back from uh, mysore um, i asked uh, my friend to stop near this uh, coconut water guy and he cut open the coconut water and i am not kidding it was fermented inside it was acidic uh, it wasn't sweet as the flavor is supposed to be but it was a little tangy little acidic so uh, my assumption was because a he must have uh, this is an old batch and b because it was direct in the sun uh, for that must have uh, <laughs> fermented uh, and we got fermented coconut water <laughs> coconut it, vinegar it, yeah, it, i think i think it became be like. almost like toddy <laughs> but mm. not toddy possible but i also feel that some coconut water is just inherently a slightly bitter and acidic kind of taste yeah. it's just like how certain mangoes are not good tasting so it's just that flavor it's unlikely oh. that uh, an unopened thing would ferment and so unless it's very old you know like mm. sometimes you cut mm-hmm. open a like you break a coconut itself and you get that the bad smell in that because it's started yeah. rotting inside so unlike unless that's like that old i don't think it would have uh, gotten fermented so it maybe, maybe. it's just that there was no bad smell there was no foul smell it and i'm not kidding it literally when he opened up there was fizz coming out of it and i'm like did he maybe. put some soda in it or what because or maybe it could be an other version of coconut yeah. water which i am not aware of uh, but we loved it uh, yeah. i i enjoyed personally i enjoyed it. i got two of them to drink <laughs> coconut vinegar is a major part of i think goan cooking as well Yeah. 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 So on that uh I we are almost towards the end of our podcast and in the end uh, we always have this interesting uh segment. Uh not like the top part is not interesting. Uh we just like to build more uh, suspense around it. <laughs> so uh, we in general um in India especially um uh, vegetarian food hota hai they were like you know people have their own version saying oh we have uh, we like north indian food better than we like south indian food better uh, depending on where which part of the world you're coming from and also when you're living abroad as well um but coming to the main question um uh, what is your favorite uh, vegetarian food yeah uh, and of course we are allowed to be biased and say oh i love tamilian vegetarian food as well uh, but but you can take a call <laughs> what's your favorite absolute favorite <laughs> If if I may add, uh, it's a very Chuck De India Shah Rukh Khan type line. I think in India has the best vegetarian uh, food or the sexiest vegetarian food in the world. And you'll notice this if you go to uh, European cafes, Italian cafes. The kind of variety that Indian vegetarian food has is unparalleled. And of course, I'm biased, but yeah. But but I want we want to hear from you, Nandita. Which state in India, according to you, has the best vegetarian food? And as Sadaf said, you can be biased. Uh, you know, Archit, like you said. Uh... if you have to be a vegetarian uh, in anywhere in the world india is the best place to be a vegetarian purely because of the kind of uh, variety that 
uh, of dishes that we have from uh, around the country so uh, not to sound like the unesco certified cuisine of the world etc but yes i do agree with you that uh, indian vegetarian cuisine trumps any other vegetarian cuisine and i'm not going to be biased because i truly truly love bengali vegetarian food and a cuisine that's like mainly known for its uh, fish and meat based dishes but uh, there is so much to uh, discover taste and enjoy in the vegetarian aspect of it because there's that whole niramish cooking culture and they make delicious things with uh, you know peels and uh, sun dried stuff and uh, unusual combination of vegetables and uh, different kinds of sauces it's so much more complex and uh, you know that could definitely be my most favorite uh, vegetarian indian vegetarian cooking well wow. i'm just adding both of what you've mentioned about uh, indian food being indian vegetarian food being really awesome as well um i don't think i you i think you know about this already but i'm going to put it all already last year um you put up a dish uh, i don't remember the exact name but i think it was pori bangan uh, or pori aubergine right i don't know the name of it but it was it had pori masala i don't know what's the exact name of it so i am somebody who does not like bangan <laughs> i don't um i like bangan only uh, in two ways uh, first is when you make bangan bhata and uh, second is when you make bangan bhaja and that's about it yeah. that's it uh, my mother ma- used to make uh, khatta meetha bangan which is a very maharashtrian version basically uh, but of course a very bihari maharashtrian version uh, apart from that i i'm not kidding i absolutely do not like bangan but when i saw your post on the pori bangan and uh, then i made that and uh, it is now a very frequent dish in uh, on my menu in my house so that and every time we get like those tiny bangans i'm like hey let's make uh, that bangan and that other bangan is also another maharashtrian of my maharashtrian friend of mine introduced which is the uh, wangi bhat which is not necessarily maharashtrian only but also yeah. maharashtrians make it Uh, but thank you for that to, to make me introduce to that yeah, uh, amazing pori bang at the start of the lockdown of last Correct. year i remember Correct. that one yeah so i i think <laughs> that, 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 that made me like hmm bang and can actually taste better however i don't think so because uh, it had more of pori masala and less of bang and flavor <laughs> so, so basically i'm saying i still don't like bang and but i like bang and with that pori masala no, that's it, 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 it was never my favorite vegetable either growing up and i would always like find excuses to skip it but i also realize now that such a versatile vegetable every cuisine especially like mediterranean or you can literally make anything with it and that just makes you see it with a bit of more respect <laughs> i have a theory which is um, unpopular opinion i think uh, middle east jo basaya gaya tha wo hamare bihar ke logon ne basaya hai um i have uh, reasons as well uh, i i can justify that <laughs> i'll tell you how they have baba ganush which essentially is bihari bharta okay they just refined it that's about it. they just take the seeds out that's it then uh, bihar also is very uh, sort of not really you know they they like to use uh, use and overuse a lot of single things like uh, chole so bihar use a lot of chola which is like sattu for example uh, and then also they do they make something like what uh, you have dal vada uh, we have something called kachri and uh, kachri basically is that uh, the dal vada that they, they make what is that dal vada called falafel <laughs> falafel yeah so that falafel is basically dal vada which is again a very south very bihari thing then they make hummus from the same stuff right same chola they make stuff and we make sattu um, so yeah it is it, and then then it, the similarity goes on and on i can keep justifying but i think hai to hum bhaiya log hi banaya hai maybe you should write a bihar white se. paper on this <laughs> <laughs> love i should i should be hari yeah. hari is everywhere <laughs> fantastic so our final segment which uh, as other said is our favorite segment and we we assume that it's our listeners favorite segment also we haven't checked but that's what we assume is underrated overrated and favorite so anita since you've written literally written the book on superfoods what are some overrated underrated and favorite superfoods of yours uh, or three categories okay can we just take a minutes break i want to think about this i can't absolutely absolutely you can edit this out so okay. underrated superfood overrated and 
I'm and your favorite. favorite. Favorite, yeah. Just check. I need to check this list. Shubhika, I've written I, a whole book. What I absolutely under- love it that you're taking a break mm-hmm. to think about it. Like mm-hmm. uh, most people, just don't think much and just say what is on the top of their head. And I actually li- like that. And, and as a researcher myself, I really appreciate that you're deeply thinking uh, about. I'm it. very bad about. I'm very bad in just coming up with things like uh, like this. You know, like the, I also like how Middle East is. Very, uh, this is a tough question. That's why it's favorite. ये करना ही है क्या ये segment? We can just okay. go with favorite if you want, or we can just Or expand it. Instead of just having a super food, we could just expand it to expand inch. all all under all favorite. All food you can say. All yeah, all food under, and overrated food as well. Okay. Now <laughs> overrated is very important because that is very overrated. Very, you know, I know, I know my favorite <laughs> overrated food. Okay, underrated. Underrated is what I'm thinking. You know, I sometimes I think I should keep these answers ready because everybody asks these kind of questions. Sure, people do. I never have an idea about what to say. Oh, jack fruit. Jack fruit is most underrated. Underrated. Millets. Oh, you could say that. I like jack fruit a lot. Me too. Absolutely. Okay. And what was the other thing? Favorite. Favorite. Avoid. कर लो. Favorite. कुछ नहीं है वैसे. ठीक है. Underrated. Overrated. कर लो. Favorite two पे हमने कर लिया हाँ vegetarian huh? cuisine. Will you ask the question again or what? Yeah, yes. yeah I'll ask the question again. Yeah. Should I do it? Should I go? Okay. Uh, editors, whoever's editing, we are taking this underrated, overrated part again. And now I want to talk about our favorite segment, which is underrated and overrated. Ah, ये हमारा favorite segment है और हम assume करते हैं listeners का भी फेवरेट होगा ही हम हमने कोई मेट्रिक्स नहीं देखे सो नंदिता टेल अस व्हाट आर सम फूड्स दैट यू थिंक आर अंडररेटेड एंड व्हाट आर सम फूड्स दैट यू थिंक आर ओवररेटेड अंडररेटेड आई वुड से जैक फ्रूट द राइप वन नॉट द रॉ वन बिकॉज़ इट्स गॉट दिस अमेजिंग फ्लेवर एंड इट्स लाइक नो अदर फ्रूट और वेजिटेबल एंड आई थिंक इट्स जस्ट दैट द पेन ऑफ यू नो Peeling it and removing the uh, fruit kind of deters people from eating it, but I think uh, a lot more people should be eating jackfruit. So that is my answer for underrated and uh, overrated. I hope that nobody is going to kill me for this. Let's <laughs> say biryani. Damn it! Shut up, Phil. Shut up, Phil. No, no. Don't kill me. Balance, balance. Kill me. She loves jackfruit as well. Yeah. So I think uh, it's just that you know it, it kind of limits our love for a lot more different Indian dishes that everybody's buck stops at biryani and you know they feel like it's the be all and end all. Of course, see, I'm I'm a vegetarian. I've not tried any what would you say like the more popular authentic uh, biryanis, and I know I get told that all the time veg biryani is pulao, etc. I'm aware of all those background information, but. I just feel like we need to explore Indian cuisine much beyond just biryani and not just be stuck at that. So beyond to, biryani, to but still between the two two things, Sadaf actually has a wonderful uh, kathal biryani recipe. Oh yes, happy See? to try it out. Yeah. <laughs> Both the things together, but also I think uh, when you saying underrated um, jackfruit being under it, I completely agree because I think. Again, assumption. I think a lot of North Indians haven't had the uh, jackfruit. They are, they know that अच्छा कच्चा है सब्जी बन जाता है. But uh, beyond that, as a fruit, I don't think they know about it. True, and it's also the reaction of uh, many North Indians to the ripe that flavor, that aroma of Correct. jackfruit is like how we would react to a durian kind of a fruit. Yeah. Where like yeah. what the hell is going mm-hmm. on here? Like it's very strong, right? Yeah, so just yeah. getting used, and especially also like coconut oil, is not something many North Indians uh, would earlier enjoy in their food. I don't know if things have changed now because of the health angle, uh, and where it's just become so popular in the West, and uh-huh. everybody starts loving coconut oil. But it's it's in one of those category of foods which uh, don't cross the border, the north the north south border so easily. True, true, true. Um, and by the way, on that it's. I I I'm because biryani ki baat ho gayi to bhook lagi or the ab katle biryani ki baat karenge and uh, on that happy happy note we will sort of karo our dukan band but 
to all the listeners, I think um, they all should go to Clubhouse and listen to Nandita and Chris Shok on Masala Trail. It's a lovely thing. Um, you will come out uh, listening to both of them and becoming a lot more smarter, I believe. <laughs> so yeah, we should. I we will put in the show link uh, and how you can go and join the club on Clubhouse. And and also we've done an episode with uh, Krish Ashok, so do check that out as well. Yes, I'm cool log. I'm cool cool log. Sir, podcast <laughs> karte. All right, and uh, of course we will link Nainta's both books and the blog in the show link, so people can go and click and help themselves in eating lot more superfoods. And okay. on that super note, dukan karte hain band. Thanks for uh, joining us, Nandita. Bye, Sadaf. Bye, Archit. Thanks for having me over. It was great fun chatting with both of you. Thank you. Likewise, this was uh, this was an absolute honor.